Hi everyone. All right, I'm on to part five of this sunset painting. And uh, I just want to show you some of the things I did off camera. You can see I have this printout and I worked on the sky more. I fixed, for the most part, this area, which if you look, it has a lot of white in it. I had oversprayed on it by, by accident, but anyway, touched it up, brought it back, and uh, did a lot of transparent tinting on top of what I had. I did use a correction color, a little white with, with a touch of uh, orange in it, just so that I won't have a color shift. Um, and so I sprayed in the white and touched up some areas that were not looking good to me. And then I went back in and added the yellow. And in some areas I took the orange and the uh, yellow, which in the beginning I didn't do that. I needed a base, a mixture of white, yellow, and a little violet. But then there were some brighter areas that really kicked up, like right there on the edge. So it was time to um, <clears throat> use some transparents very carefully. And that's the, the, the nice thing about the transparents, that you can do something like that, tinting and softly adding color, like to the mountain down here took red violet and I just kind of went over it took a little bit of a grayer darker color and misted over that so it's kind of mixing on the board a little playing around with it adjusting it now again I said when these trees are when this tree is put in and there really are trees if you look in the background there's a couple out of focus branches representing another tree behind this one very very subtle you don't even have to put it in um, but in this case um, there's a couple ways to go about this. As you can see, I started putting in the, uh, the dark blackish green, mostly black, and uh, started it with a paintbrush. So, the tools I'm going to use, and I'm not going to do the whole tree on here. This video would take too long and it would be repetitious. You'll get the point, you'll get, you'll get you know, how I go about doing it by seeing me do a small section. But anyway, I've got some brushes here, the fatter one here. It's a round, it's a round brush, round furl. And then you got, they're all rounds. The liner, another liner, a fine detailing brush. Okay, so these three brushes I was using, uh, actually I was using this one, and I think this one at first. And you can see some of the things I've done already. Okay, so first with the airbrush, because there is some big areas that are going to take a lot of time and you, you don't want brush marks you don't and I will go back in and airbrush over if I see brush marks to tie it back in you might not even be able to see in the video that I see some just little little bit of uh, marks which could look fine as far as pine needles and the trees in the dark but over here I have a little section a couple ways you could go about this so I have the color mixed in here the I'm going to spray over this, um, has a small piece of film on it, disregarding the green, little green outline there, air dry, air dry, just kind of get it to where you second coat it, you don't just flood it on, you know, you want to kind of not do that, but more air dry a little, go back in, so in a case like this, I'm just going to get my X-Acto blade out and we're going to take something like this off later, you know, leaving you with uh, an area where you could still pres preserve the white or whatever I'm trying to do if I was protecting the orange. I'm not going to do that with all this. I'm just showing you some ways to save it. Now that's a hard edge, but with the airbrush, this would be more of a blue gray that's going to be in there and actually it's much smaller than that it's probably right around here i'm just trying to get it to where you can find different ways to keep areas from getting uh over spray or paint directly on them or you could go in and let's pick one that's not even really in the pictures probably uh, right around here i'm just gonna go in and outline very carefully. It's flooding a little bit. Turn the air down. Okay. 
So you just can kind of freehand in the strokes. Just go like that, get in close. You can outline it. Do it very carefully. Now, it is making overspray, which is uh, not wanted, you know. So that's not exactly on a small shape a great thing to have happen because I usually aim the opposite way. So let me try another one over here and aim out. I'm going to aim the airbrush that way, keeping a clean edge. So what I would do is I would not continue this way. This, this painting is loose, I can turn it. And I would continue to paint, not dirtying up the, uh, the picture, and I would just try to aim out. Out meaning aim that way. So that that overspray does not go into the shape. We do it on t-shirts, you do it on all kinds of paintings that you have to you know, control where you're spraying. Uh, in the case of spraying in a large area like over here to get the job done quicker, now I have to be careful. I don't want to go, you know, all crazy and spray outside this shape. So I can come up and re-outline what I painted before off camera. Just kind of work your way up to it. Air dry. See, it's going from wet looking to, that's the beauty of this, uh, this paint dries so nicely. Okay, so now we're gonna go in and get real close, and I'm gonna freehand in some shapes, which is really not, you know, the way I wanna go about this. It depends on if I have an out of focus branch or something, and I wanna blur the edge a little, like right here. I might back away and blur that edge a little bit, right, right in there. There, it's fuzzy now. Okay, so, this will take very long. I did a sunset, a sunset painting not too long ago, somewhere in the past year, and I had trees in the front, and I started with the airbrush, and I was like, all right, I'll do it for the large areas, but I'll go back in, hand paint some of the tighter edges so I don't have to use stencils, and then go back in and, uh, you know, if I can, take the airbrush and get in real close and soften some of those paintbrush marks. So let's take a brush like this one. Okay, I've got my paint off to the side, a little piece of paper here for a palette. And I'm going to just kind of, actually this brush is no good. It's, if I see that I used it for the, um, I'm sorry. I used this brush for the liquid masking <laughs> and I overdid it with the uh, dish soap and it, it ruined it, sort of. Can use it for other things, but I'm gonna go back to I'm gonna go back to this round brush, okay? Now, if I press real hard, I can really get too wide, you know. So I'm gonna just kinda go in here and just take my time. I'm not worried about the uh, actual little um, tiny needles. I'm not worried about that right now. I'm going to just lay in using my second finger here just as a rigger just to help me on this angle that I'm on. I don't care for this angle. Now, if I load the brush up, I get a really white, a really wet point on there and I can kind of just touch it down. Oh, sorry guys, let me, I'm shaking on the desk here by, by pushing and stuff. All right, so you can see some of these uh, branches being put in. Uh, let's go with the finer brush and it takes second coating and things like that I you know I'll do whatever it takes to make it look good so I'm gonna go over this green one here it's already here you know I, I was using a color pencil to find the actual um, you know the drawing after I spraying over it to rede redefine it as I said in the other video so you get out like that. Now you could start pulling some dagger strokes with this brush. That's not a good one there. Let's try it. You can just kind of, and then go back in. Whoops. This is really hard to do when I'm pressing down on the desk. But, um, okay. Hopefully the lighting is good for you too because from where I'm, I don't work on this angle as I say to you in most of the videos. I work straight up and down. But, um, yeah, I'm going to go in here. I'm going to use my other finger just to kind of 
Now this will all dry. And they're really not points. Some of them are points. Some of them are just marks. It's really organic looking. It's meaning it's it's nature. It's very um, you know chaotic looking and random. Branches are not perfect. That's what's nice about this uh, painting. This kind of a picture. If and if I made the branch a little bit longer than the picture, who cares? Nobody cares that the branch is a little longer. All right. I got to be careful here trying so you get you get the idea of where I'm going with the paint brushes um, again in the real picture we've got some openings we've got some areas another thing you can do is I could spray in like on this dark area say there was an opening here I could take the cor color the correction color and I could spray in the shapes kind of fuzzy and out of shapes then spray in the color and then cut around it and put orange sky or blue loose clouds in these areas without worrying about um, you know where like doing it after the fact that's what I'm saying so we're gonna kind of cut around this orange and let's try to do that like I said I'm not gonna finish this whole thing I will show you the finished painting obviously yeah so I'm just gonna go around there aim it out a little pump stroke tip dry a little rocking of the needle on the side. I kind of, you know, spit it out a little bit into the paper. You get some nice uh, speckles that could be like granite or something, but not when you don't want them. So, yeah, you can get in really nice with this Micron. You could do things that are really tight, like that little shape there. Now this I can aim this way. Let's see. Just outlining it and in, in reality looking at the real picture that is out of focus whoops it's out of focus so my edging won't be that um, that tight it will be once I get it in the upright position I'll go back in and on purpose make it go out of focus a little bit um, I might even use a little burnt umber burnt sienna and go back and forth to, to ruin the edge a little but in a controlled way and I can't really control it at least for me like I said this is completely flat on this desk and so far it's given me the best way to show you without my hand being in the way it's I think it's really good a good view I've watched some videos out there that they're really good but some of the angles are so far away that I can't really see what they're doing or they are um, yeah it's usually the angles that give me nothing to go by it's like oh man I wish I could see what you're doing but you can't um, you need to have it to where the, the viewer can see what the artist is doing and I know you my hand up oh, now that moved a little bit It'll calm down. Okay, I have actually a piece of tape uh, making the flex arm steadier, and I guess the tape just shifted. But here we go, it's gonna shift again. What are we doing here? All right. Just work through it. Even my shifting tape, who cares? <laughs> gotta have fun, gotta paint, and we gotta try to make these videos as realistic and like I said mistakes included because if you're in my class if you were you know in my studio you're gonna see all the all the crazy little mistakes and spills and everything that can go go on in a painting that would just be like it's really good to, to have a teacher one-on-one -on -one. Uh, uh, it's good to see you know and get and get criticized too by your work uh, you know having the feedback from the teacher you know that that's really really great way to learn and you know there's nothing that beats a hands-on you know being with the teacher in a classroom environment but these videos are really good too I've learned a lot from uh, watching YouTube um, and so you could see I'm filling it in 
And as I, I'll do one more little section here. I think I'll use, uh, let's see, let me try this one I still was using here. It might be a little too fat, but I'm gonna kind of steady my hand here. And I'm gonna just pull this branch. Where is this coming from? I think it goes this way and it goes this way and up and you're gonna see little little guys popping off the uh, pencil lines are already there I'll just keep working it until they disappear and the more you see the little guys the more you see the darker branches in front of the sunset the more that the nighttime scene will just automatically happen because that's going to lock out all the white and it's going to look really cool like a silhouette so right now um i guess i could do a little bit more so let's just try a bigger area if we were doing something like this i don't really want to do that see that's kind of the branches are okay but the, i don't know if you if, if you could see it but you could try and experiment and do anything you want, but in the end, that's only like a first coat. I still have to go in and make that become one by second coating it until it... So I might as well use the airbrush in the bigger areas, right? To uh, I'm gonna paint right over them because I don't think they're in the real picture. Sometimes when you trace things or you're looking at things, you, you give yourself extra information Sometimes the information, you, you're drawing it down. This was traced down with uh, the, what do you call it, graphite paper uh, from a tracing paper. And I just took the image off my computer screen. Again, this is my own photo, but I just lightly outlined it. I didn't use the projector. I used a piece of tracing paper from the uh, desktop and I just taped it on and I brought it in here and went to town on it you know putting it onto the board and as you watch the other videos from previous videos part one two and all that stuff you'll see you'll see those things of what I did in the beginning till I get it really nice and smooth so there I'm hiding that brush mark just by going over it so it really doesn't matter, you know, it's a waste of time actually with the liquid airbrush paint for me to go in there and and uh, brush it on. I don't want to do that. If this was acrylics, yeah, you got canvas and it, it's got the tooth of the canvas and you're trying to do a whole nother style of painting, then maybe I, you know, of course I would use the paintbrush. Okay, so I will, like I said, I will show you the video. I can just, you can do anything you want in here. This is all going to be the open. You can write your name, <laughs> you know, whatever you're doing, because it's going to be covered. As long as you're not going in the areas that are the sky finished areas. And then you second coat it, feather stroke, a little soft strokes. I don't know if you can see it over here. So let me bring a piece of paper onto the picture. The soft stroke, more air. There we go is how you want to do these things. So let's say I was uh, doing a sky. I'm going to go overlap, second pass, third pass, and so on. You pull away, pull the airbrush away, you can get a nice gradation. You want a straight edge or something, you could take, um, you could take a stencil and you can spray onto the paper obviously uh, if you lift it a little bit you can get from a hard edge to a soft edge um, okay so remember your dagger strokes remember, remember your feather strokes remember distance and remember to um, go after your tip dry and when you're painting up, you know, straight down, remember to turn your color cup so it doesn't spill onto the surface. So yeah, practice your drills, practice, you know, practice doodling and 
whatever whatever you want to do just start doodling with the airbrush for the beginners you know just have fun draw cartoons practice shading just have fun especially on a t-shirt thing I mean you could really you could go to town you know doing it on a paper towel or whatever practice your shading in a, in a curved manner do everything you can you know this this airbrush is so great I mean it, you could go in and do bloodshot so that's a dagger stroke but it's like very very close and if I put more uh, reducer or liquid in there you can get it to where you get it so fine, it sprays so soft that it's just an unbelievable uh, airbrush. And I've been using it for a long time. So, some of these tight areas, I'm just getting in here. I could use the brush, you know. I guess this area needs some gray in here, more gray. But that's all right. So, as I work my way through it, and I connect with areas, you can bounce around as I am doing. You know, you could you could go in and out of different areas. Uh, it's probably better to just keep working in areas so you can see something get done. Because it starts driving you crazy. You know, it's like a little here, a little there, but that's part of it. The main thing is it's going to all come together. And so I'll probably call this video at this point. I do want to show you little things that I pick up. I got this... Uh, you know at the store over at Michael's I think it was and this is actually an ot light which is your color correct lighting okay now this this bin that I'm keeping it in um, this has a light on it so I can go in and if you need to really see your work up close you know you get those needles you know, little lettering and things like that but um, so it's a nice product it's great my eyes are getting weaker and weaker so it's great for reading it's great for and like I said there is a light there's a light on in there and uh, you don't need the light all the time but I, I use it for whatever and uh, I took an old watercolor box that a sampler of four colors came in and I said the thing is the same size this didn't come with a case I carved out that foam this fits in snug and then I took the company logo, which was on the box, and I now have the lamp, the, the uh, magnifier protected. Uh, so it's kind of cool. It looks like the packaging from the factory, but I made this for, I don't want it to get scratched and damaged. So you got to be creative and think outside the box sometimes. Um, anyway, thanks again for checking out these videos. My uh, goal again is to get uh, a lot of subs subscribers and not only for you to subscribe and make sure you click on the bell, get that notification so you see the latest video, but if you have other artists, friends, or people interested, share the videos, like it, like the videos, share them and, and I can build on it. I've got about five or six, maybe seven uh, subscribers from Instagram I just put up a an advertisement you know and it wasn't even a paid advertisement it was just my page I got about 900 followers today I got 902 so I break I broke over the 800 mark and that's where I'm starting to get responses so um, the more I can build the channel the more I can do this right now this there's no income coming from it it's impossible you know, you have to have tons of subscribers. My goal is someday maybe to have that happen. But in the meantime, I'm a working artist. I do, uh, I teach a little bit and part-time and I sell my pet portraits and these kind of paintings. So that's how I kind of make a little money. And in the meantime, if I can find a way to get this channel to grow, like some of my channels I see out there, that'll be good. If not, enjoy the free videos and and uh, it also could bring in the locals, people in my area, could say, oh, I saw you on, you know, on YouTube and 